Hello, I'm Dustin Johnson, a forage agronomist for the Cisco Companies in Indianapolis, Indiana, and I'm also a farmer. Today I'm out in one of my soybean fields checking the results of some cover crops that we planted back in October. Uh, today is uh, December the 17th, 2021. We planted most of these cover crops around the 20th of October in 2021. And uh, if you're from central Indiana, you certainly remember that this October was extremely wet. Our local weather station uh, reported that this was the third wettest October since records began 130 years ago. Uh, so as you can imagine, we struggled, and uh, struggled especially even to find days that had uh, dry enough topsoil uh, to have a layer of grade off soil on top. And on one of the days that was less muddy, <laughs> we decided to try three different methods to see if we could, uh, could get a successful stand of cover crops. And I'd like to share those with you today. We'll visit a farm where we broadcast and harrowed seed in place, uh, a place that we just broadcast the seed and allowed uh, Mother Nature in the rain to, to plant the seeds for us. And then finally, we'll visit a field where we modified a no-till drill uh, to remove all the down pressure and the closing wheels that we just slice the slot into the soil and place the seed in that slot. This is our first location. This is a farm that has been continuous no-till uh, for about six years in one soybean rotation. And for the last four years, we've used a cover crop of some kind. Uh, the first thing that I noticed walking out here is that it's the middle of December, the frost has come out of the ground, and we are walking easily and not very muddy on our feet. No-till and cover crops are doing their job to improve water infiltration. This is an area of the field that we were able to broadcast with an air seeder and use the harrow on the air seeder to get some level of incorporation. You can see that there's still a lot of residue on the surface. We just barely tickled the top of the ground to help the seed find the ground. And we got a decent amount of emergence. If you look up towards the horizon, you'll see that the field doesn't have uh, much of an appearance of having cover crop growth. But if we get close and look down, there's quite a bit happening. This cover crop mix is a blend of uh, barley, Valor barley from Cisco, uh, radishes, balanza clover, and hairy veg. You can see so far the, uh, the radishes and the barley have the best emergence. Looks like a spot where we've got some cover crop growth. And so immediately I want you to notice how the soil naturally aggregates into blocks. The roots from our cover crop are finding these soil channels, keeping them open, and are supporting life in the soil here in the middle of December when it otherwise would be completely fallow. results aren't what you might think of as impressive, but given the conditions we had to grow, I'm pleased and I'm very happy to be having living roots and a cover crop growing on this hillside, uh, which is a moderately eroded 2-6% to slope in a fairly low organic matter state. We're, we're well on our way to improving this farm. Uh, these are the results we achieved with the broadcast and harrow. Now let's go over to a wetter part of the farm and see what results we got with broadcast only. This is an area of the field that I remember making a mental note that was too wet to drag the harrow and simply had seed broadcast on the surface. If you look down onto the ground, you can see that there is some germination, but it's at a much lower rate than the other parts of the field. I find it very interesting that most of the germination seems to be happening where Mother Nature uh, planted the seeds for us. This is an earthworm bidden that has a group of clover and a radish growing out, out from under it. And there's the wormhole. But on the whole, uh, we did not achieve the so uh, seed to soil contact that we needed to get a good stand of cover crops. This area of the field I would not deem a success. Now we've traveled to another field to look at our third planting method. This is a field of organic wheat that was no-tilled into soybean stubble at around the same time. Uh, and our method here was that we took a no-till drill uh, removed as much down pressure as we could and took all the springs off of the closing wheels so that we just cut a slice and drizzled the seed in that slice. And then at 
that point, uh, drug a, a closing wheel with no force against it on top. And at the time, we could look down and see a, a row of seeds, for the most part, in the soil. And keep in mind, this was done because it was extremely wet, and I didn't want to take that closing wheel and, and smack and seal and smear that seed into the slot to where it couldn't get in the air and, and it would essentially drown. So under normal conditions, we wouldn't do this, but it seemed to be a good idea at the time, and it resulted in the very best results of everything we tried those days. Uh, with nearly a full stand of winter wheat. So we look down at the wheat itself, you can see that the, the slot is still there and is still not closed, uh, but we received some heavy warm rains uh, just in the evenings after planting and have received a full stand. I think the take home message from our experiences this fall is that seed to soil contact is absolutely paramount to getting a good stand. And that's true whether we're in dry ideal conditions or in wet, unideal conditions. And we found this year that broadcasting and harrowing was better than broadcasting alone, and that no-till drilling, even without closing the seed slot very well, was better than uh, broadcasting and harrowing. We're gonna keep looking at these fields uh, as time goes on. So we'll be back in the spring to take a look at how everything overwintered and to see how uh, things continue to grow and flourish, I hope. And uh, we'll definitely invite you to come along this spring.